minutes video clip, this time in slow motion. You'll notice that as the plane approaches the tower, first of all, we're too far away to get a clear shot in any detail of the plane. So therefore, it's hard to make out whether or not there was anything attached to the bottom of this plane, as was the case with Flight 175. However, there is another similarity. Just as the plane makes impact, there is a flash. Let's look at it again, and keep in mind that as we watch this plane make impact, this flash occurs just before the plane crashes into the North Tower. This time, as we watch this clip, note the shadow rising from the lower right of the Trade Center Tower, and keep in mind that the shadow won't reach the impact point before the plane and vice versa. This is very important because the flash occurs before the shadow and the plane meet. This time, let's look at this clip in reverse. You'll notice that as the plane slowly backs out of the North Tower, it is clear of the tower and then the flash occurs, indicating that the flash occurred before the plane made impact on the North Tower. One more time, this video clip showing the flash as the plane hit the North Tower. Now this video clip that we've just examined came again from the Naudé Brothers documentary that was being filmed in the streets of New York City on the morning of September 11th. This documentary about the New York City firefighters was going to be assembled at a later date and it was not televised. In fact, there was no live coverage at all of Flight 11 as it hit the North Tower. After all, it was a surprise attack. So if there was no live television coverage of the first plane hitting the first tower, how do we explain the following comment from George Walker Bush? What was the first thing that went through your head when you heard that a plane crashed into the first? Well, I was sitting in a, a schoolhouse in Florida. I'd gone down to tell my little brother what to do, and uh, <laughs> you go ahead and sit down. Just kidding, Jeb. And uh, it's the mother in me. Anyway. Uh, I uh, was sitting there and my chief of staff, well first of all when we walked in the classroom uh, I had seen this uh, plane fly into the first building, there was a TV set on and, and uh, you know I thought it was pilot error. You know right off the bat there will probably be some folks out there that will try to minimize or negate what we've discussed in this program and turn it into some sort of a political football. They'll say we're, we're left wingers or we're, we're democrat liberal types and we're bush bashing. Nothing could be farther from the truth. Let's not forget that it was under the Clinton administration that we launched a missile attack in Afghanistan and Sudan to destroy what turned out to be an aspirin factory because they had bad intel that they were manufacturing chemicals. It's happening again, folks. It has nothing to do with liberal versus conservative or Democrat versus Republican or right versus left. It has everything to do with right versus wrong. On September 11th, it was reported that the passengers of Flight 93 were in the process of overcoming terrorists who had taken over the plane using box cutters. And in the process, the plane crashed in a field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania at 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Well, if Flight 93 crashed in Shanksville at 10 o'clock Eastern Time, how do we explain the following story that was carried by WCPO-TV Channel 9 in Cincinnati, Ohio? This story was posted on the Internet at 11.43 a.m. Eastern Time by web producer Liz Foreman. The headline reads, Plane lands in Cleveland. Bomb feared aboard. A Boeing 767 out of Boston made an emergency landing Tuesday at Cleveland Hopkins International Airport due to concerns that it may have a bomb aboard, said Mayor Michael R. White. United identified the plane as Flight 93. If United Airlines Flight 93 crashed at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, then how could Flight 93 also have landed at Cleveland Hopkins International Airport, been evacuated, and searched for a bomb 
as was reported at 11.43 Eastern Time by Liz Foreman from WCPO-TV in Cincinnati. Which flight was the real Flight 93? Which flight crashed in Shanksville, Pennsylvania? And now we come to the $10,000 question. How is it possible that in the sleepy town of Versailles, Missouri, in a little production studio, we can do an in-depth analysis and a slow motion expose of video footage that's been at the fingertips of every major news network all this time? How is it possible that they can show you slow motion video of car crashes and basketball games and they can do frame by frame analysis of major events in history like the JFK assassination and yet they haven't seen fit to show you one slow motion picture of these planes hitting the towers. Why is it that shortly after September 11th it was decided that it would be too painful for America to see these videos anymore and so they decided to stop showing them? Maybe now we know why they stopped showing these videos. And maybe we should have nothing but contempt for the mainstream networks for withholding this information. After all, if you become aware of a lie and you do nothing to expose the lie, you then become part of the lie. Has this ever happened before in American history? Have the mainstream media networks ever suppressed information in regard to terrorist attacks in this country? appears to be the Oklahoma County bomb squad. Uh, it's their bomb disposal unit essentially is what it is and it is what they would use to, if, if the report that we gave you just a few moments ago turns out to be correct, that they have found a second explosive device of some kind inside this building. They'll back that trailer down there and the uh, bomb squad folks will go in and they will use that, uh, that trailer. You see the, the bucket on the back there, sort of this is how they would transport the explosive device away from this populated area to try to do something now with confirmed. it. Uh, through federal authorities that a second bomb has been found inside that federal building in Oklahoma City. It was an explosion at 9 o'clock this morning that did that damage you're looking at right there, blowing off the entire north face of that building. Again, you're looking at the north face there. A second bomb was found on the east side of that building. A bomb squad is on the scene. That second bomb has not exploded. We don't know quite the status yet if they've managed to defuse it, but it has been confirmed that a second bomb was found on the east side of that building. I just building. took a look down the street uh, at the Morrow building again. I see another bomb truck going, so apparently they're going to try to get out that third bomb that's been talked about. Still a lot of activity around the Morrow building. Uh, security concerns that another one still might go off. That's what everybody's worried about. At the present time, the medical teams downtown are unable to get into the wreckage to retrieve more of the injured because of the presence of other uh, bombs in the area. I've been told by the police department that just as soon as those bombs are defused, they will permit the medical teams to enter. Just for a second, we want to update our audience that uh, the Justice Department is reporting that a second explosive device has been found in the AP Murrah uh, building in downtown Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike, you're still with us, aren't you? Yes, I am. And I, and I might tell you, in addition to that, that in fact, what we were told at the scene a few minutes ago was that, in fact, two different explosive devices were found in addition to the one that went off. So a total of three, A total saying. of three, and, of course, then there was mass confusion whenever uh, there were hundreds of spectators in the area, and when they heard that there were other bombs in the building, people were running from the area in the opposite direction as fast as they could. Utter devastation that that one explosion caused, because here's now what we are starting to learn about uh, the succession or what... Someone obviously hoped would be a succession of explosions. The first bomb that was in the federal building did go off. It did the damage that you see right there. The second explosive was found and diffused. The third explosive that was found, and they are working on right now as we speak, I understand, both the second and third explosives, if you can imagine this, were larger than the first. So try to imagine two Boy. or threefold happening. Mm -hmm. Uh, what we've already seen there. It is just uh, incredible to think that there was that much heavy artillery that was somehow moved into the downtown Oklahoma President City. President Clinton Federal. just called Frank uh, Keating, Governor Frank Keating, and he says that three FBI anti-terrorist teams are en route to Oklahoma City. Right now, they are saying that this is the work of a sophisticated group. This is a very uh, sophisticated uh, device, and um, it has to have been done by an explosives expert, um, obviously. You talk about uh, the second bomb that was found. Uh, Devin told us earlier we got information that the second and third bomb were bigger 
than the one that was detonated. 1,200 pounds of explosives in that first one that went off. The second and third devices that were found were actually larger than that. So you can I'm detonated.